right now there's no PA program in the state of Hawaii, which means this opens up an incredible opportunity for us to attract people from the mainland. Uh, my name is Josh Green. Well, I serve as a senator in the state of Hawaii, and I'm also an emergency room physician here on the Big Island. Uh, Big Island suffers some of the most severe shortage of healthcare providers in the whole state. Statewide, we're about 22% short for healthcare providers, but on Big Island, it's about 40%. We also have severe shortage in most of the specialty areas, so it's difficult to find a urologist, difficult to find an oncologist sometimes. We also have a lot of shortage in primary care, so we deal with all of the challenges here on Big Island, which is why this program is going to be so valuable. Everybody, I'm Brett Carey, I'm board chairman for the West Hawaii Community Health Centers. And well, healthcare shortages pervade the islands, now. but they're even worse on Big Island for several reasons. One, we're very rural, so we're so spread out. Two reimbursements are lower. We have 51% of our population on the Big Island on Medicaid, and that means that overall reimbursements tend to be on the lower side across all of our patient populations. So when someone comes in to be a provider, it's harder to find the resources to keep a practice open to recruit people. Those are two of the big reasons. Uh, there are other reasons such as access to schools and recruiting families who uh, want to put their kids in a great school. Sometimes that's a challenge too. So many things happen uh, which prevent us from uh, outcompeting California, Washington, New York to get doctors and uh, nurse practitioners and PAs here in our state. A couple of statistics, I, I won't try to bore you with numbers, but it's important to recognize for instance, when I came with the National Health Corps, it was my first job as an adult. Uh, I came to be the doctor in Ka'u, and my partner was a PA, a physician assistant named Donna, who's a dear friend of mine e even now. The likelihood of us staying in Hawaii was very low. Donna herself did go back to Florida after several years. We only had a 20% chance of retaining the healthcare providers if they weren't trained or didn't do any of their training here in Hawaii if that was from med school or residency. But if we train people in the islands, we have an 85% chance of retaining them. So those who do a training program in a PA program or a family practice program, med school, what have you, 85% chance they'll stay in the islands because they'll form relationships. They'll be like me. I, I met my wife, fell in love, started having kids, stayed. There's a healthcare uh, shortage, uh, health per healthcare provider shortage and PAs are part of the solution. Well, this program is something I'm very excited about. This is a program we, where we will train physician assistants in partnership with UW, University of Washington, to be here in Kona, to actually get their education, get their training, get their clinical experience here in the islands, and we expect they'll stay. Uh, we also see this as a uh, social justice piece, and there are individuals in this community who deserve access to a better than living wage career choice. And the best way to do that is to bring a program here to the islands, recruit individuals from the islands, train them and educate them, and then let them be deployed back in their home state. So the medic program is the physician assistant educational program at the University of Washington School of Medicine. It's a 27-month program where we take experienced personnel and train them and educate them to be physician assistants. When we look, and I think one of my colleagues will be presenting, when you train individuals or educate individuals locally, you get an 85% return that they're likely going to stay in this state. Senator Green mentioned that it's about a 20% when you bring someone from the outside. That's a big difference. So there are over 250 PA programs in the country. They're developing everywhere except here in Hawaii. We feel that needs to change. And we as a program and as an organization, University of Washington School of Medicine, uh, is interested in being the first PA program here in the islands. I envision a uh, satellite campus here in the Hawaiian Islands here in Kona. Uh, Medex has experience doing that because we have done decentralized education. Decentralized education means campuses outside of the main campus in Seattle. Uh, and so we, ex we envision a campus here in the state of Hawaii, here in West Hawaii, ideally at this uh, site Nelha uh, in the 2021. I can say that I had come uh, not just representing the Medex program, but our School of Medicine dean uh, supports this. Uh, our, our, all the medicine leadership at the School of Medicine support this. So we have a lot of backing from our institution, and we just are trying to continue to develop the uh, uh, goodwill here in the, 
in the community to bring this program here. So the University of Washington wants to partner with the state of Hawaii and, uh, and Kona uh, is a site because one, it has an ideal location for us in terms of a campus, a didactic classroom or the, where the students would be in the classroom phase of their education. And the reason for that is that it has the infrastructure and international airport that's local. So getting back and forth between the main campus and throughout the islands is a little easier. Uh, the uh, opportunity to be here in a community that has a lot of enthusiasm and, and wants us here is also important. We've also identified just locally in this uh, West Hawaii that there is a important need for healthcare providers. Uh, for instance, uh, I was chatting with the folks from West Hawaii Community Health Center. The infant mortality rate in this West Hawaii is 6.3. That's one of the highest in the state. That's, a, that's an indicator that there's a healthcare provider need uh, for women's health and prenatal health. So we see this as an opportunity for us to come to West Hawaii here, partner with the community, and establish a physician assistant education program that could help be part of the solution for meeting the healthcare access need. Well, I'm very uh, uh, fond of physician assistants. I'm also very respectful of what they add to our practices. We're able to, as uh, doctors, expand our capacity greatly. Many of us look at physician assistants as our absolute partners in practice. So when we have a practice and we want to take care of another thousand, two thousand, five thousand people in our community, often the best way to do it is to form a partnership, recruit a physician assistant, and then another, and then another, so that we can take care of a broader base of our population, work on healthcare management, on population health, on disparities, and have that bigger practice without necessarily trying to find another physician colleague. So I'm here today to really promote the profession. I'm part of the Hawaii Academy of PAs, and I want to see our profession grow. Um, with the MedEx coming here, with bringing a PA program, it's just something that I'm really passionate about, so I want to support them and support our profession in Hawaii. We answer the call for the healthcare shortage, so we have a shortage of physician providers in all specialties, and physician assistants are able to answer that call by being extenders to providing healthcare uh, to patients in need. A PA obtains a, a three-year degree or a master's degree in medicine, whereas an MD or a DO is a four-year doctorate degree in, in um, medicine. And uh, from there, physicians go on to uh, residency to specialize, whereas PAs from there can go out into practice right away. So if you are looking it at from the perspective of your goal is to practice medicine, it's a different route. So, you know, you are you know, investing a little under three years of medical education, whereas in MD school it's, it's four years. So just from um, the time that you spend in school, I guess one way you look at it, it's, it is less expensive to go to PA school, uh, to med school, but they're different professions. So I do want to thank Clara Yoshida, uh, David and Eugene Yap, and their son Matthew, who is in our program in Spokane. Uh, today we're getting an overview of the program. We're uh, communicating with the community, we're building excitement, we're putting together strategies on how we're going to raise some of the additional money. Uh, a lot of the time it's relationships. So when you come into a community you want to have a good rapport with the community and they, uh, the program's already done that uh, with the Yap family and so many others. A lot of it's very technical and we want to be able to go back out to our high school and our college and our graduate students and say this program is something you should think about. So a lot of it is about the relationships. And in addition to that, we have some expert speakers to talk about the state of healthcare in Hawaii, the state of our provider shortage, and really what we can offer here in our community. People do things for themselves. And, and if your why is what the why of those people is, then the program would be successful. And that has been so true for everything that we do. Physician assistant programs have absolutely helped in meeting the shortages of healthcare providers around the country. A, a really good example is our partnership with UA Alaska, in which we started that program, and, and the graduates, a number, a good percentage of those graduates have stayed within the state of Alaska. It's as high as 80%, which is an amazing return rate. And they've really helped bring healthcare to the communities and the areas which had absolutely no access to healthcare. And, and we hope to do the same here. The other thing we do is whatever we do, we try to elevate it. I came today to support um, the MedEx program. Um, 
because I really believe it's a great program and um, I wanna, I'm pursuing to be a physician's assistant and it's nice to have a program that's here in the state of Hawaii so I could have my education here versus being out of the state. You guys ask me what your needs are um, and, and how is it that we can help the, you, we can, our students can help you. Physician assistance program will allow people to earn a median income of $97,000. So without having to go to medical school. It takes t about 27 months to get through a PA program from the best PA program in the country. And that's the UW one. So we will um, have a program that's going to train people and help to address the, the tremendous need we have for health care <clears throat> in this county. We just don't have enough doctors, and a doctor can supervise at least four f uh, physician assistants. So we need to have these people trained uh, here locally so they can serve our islands, so they can serve the other islands in Hawaii. So most of the reason that we have been successful is by building alliances. Right? I've been working on health care shortages and the issues for 14 years, all 14 years in the legislature. And to be honest, I came to Hawaii with the National Health Corps uh, before that. So in 2000, when I moved to Hawaii, I was recruited uh, to serve in an, a shortage area, a, a physician shortage area, which was all the way down in Kau, where there was no doctor, no, no PA, no anybody. And so Actually, my first job was as the family doctor and a half-time physician assistant, and we held down the fort for 8,000 patients on Kau. That's how short we are. So from the first moments I stepped uh, onto the islands, I was dealing with the health care shortage. As a legislator, I've passed bills to also do loan repayment. So if they have any debt from their education, if they work in rural areas, they can repay their debt. We're trying to make this a, a kind of rounded out package. So we have great educators from UW and other partnerships. Some of my colleagues you'll see next that are gonna be on their clinical faculty. Then we get that uh, kind of hook in them so that they're wonderful, now partially Hawaii experienced people. And then we hope they'll stay in Kona, Kohala, Kau, Hilo. We want them on the Big Island, uh, even in the other parts of the state. As far as I'm concerned, the more uh, people we train, the better chance we're going to have to deal with our professional shortage here in the islands.